talented upperclassmen and some young players that really can get the job done for the Tigers. Oh, maybe other than North Carolina, Josh, this could be the deepest team that Virginia Tech has faced all season. We certainly talked about it off air. I think this Clemson team is good from front to back, like I said in the pregame open, and then you mentioned the depth. They bring players on who bring you the same energy throughout the game. Skinner tested early, and the Hokies get that one out of dodge thanks to the help of Haugen. So early on already, 30 seconds in, we'll see a corner here from the Tigers. You saw Megan Bornkamp getting forward there. She, Even though she's one of those center midfield three, she's going to be the one that gets a little more forward into the attack and really stretches out the defense in different ways. She's not afraid to kind of drift wide to either side. What can the Tigers do with this set piece here? Just a minute in. Into the six and cleared away by Pelkowski. Rolling all the way out for Lane St. George getting the start for Clemson today. Lane St. George started in a few games before this one. Going to be big back there. Into the box again and blasted over the crossbar. So the Hokies get a break. And if you look at Clemson's matchup against Virginia, and a matchup that Eddie Rodwanski was really excited about, actually, despite it just being a 1-1 draw, he was excited about the fact that Clemson held UVA to just six shots the entire game, four on goal. But we're already seeing it here, Josh, where Clemson is a team that's going to possess a lot and get a lot of shots off. Clemson is going to generate a ton of shots and shots on goal. I mean, that's the style of team they are. They're going to dominate possession, and they're going to play a really aesthetically pleasing style of soccer. I love to watch this Clemson team. It's going to be about for Virginia Tech. Can they make the most of the chances they get? Because they're probably not going to generate more shots than this Clemson team, but... It, it really doesn't matter the amount of shots, the amount of possession a team has. Soccer is a funny game in that way. You just got to capitalize on the ones you get. Good pass all the way up to Bourne Camp. Senior from Mooresville, North Carolina. Virginia Tech's defense swarming against her, led by Haugen. Back to St. George again. Monkeys won it out. Might have had... Actually, some evidence there to why they were upset. That ball looked out of bounds, but Clemson plays on. Hirschfeld. The cross. And Skyers knocks the ball away with her left foot. Hokies, a bit of space here. That space evaporates for a moment. Maltese wins the ball back. Whistle blows, and it will be a free kick for Virginia Tech. Yeah, that's one that initially Mackenzie Duff lost out on. Really good physical play and hold-up play there by Sophie Maltese, and then Duff just put the arm out on it. Another look at this. Yeah, good physicality, and then the when the arm gets extended like that, that's going to be a pretty easy free kick call, and these are the types of opportunities Virginia Tech has to capitalize on. Into the box, looking for George. And it'll be a goal kick for Clemson. And that's something, this Virginia Tech team really does a really great job of getting those bigger players up in the box. Allie George, one of them, certainly. There's Chugger Adair trying to get the Hokies back to the NCAA tournament another year. And when we talk with Coach Rodmanski about Clemson and how when he inherited this program back in 2011 he noted Chugger Adair and said they were a big inspiration for our success success with how we wanted to build our program right. here at Clemson because those Virginia Tech teams of the early 2010s especially the one in 2013 that got to the College Cup they were tough and we wanted to build something like that at Clemson and the Tigers certainly have some a variety of a tough team here this year. Yeah, Eddie and Chugger have a ton of respect for one another, played together previously, a lot of uh, camaraderie between those two, a lot of respect for opposing programs. I mean, 
what else can you say about Coach Redwanski with that record with Clemson, with the amount of tournaments? I think the only thing left for him is to get to that college cup and get a national championship. And I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but this is the type of Clemson team that seems to me could make a deep run into the postseason and into that college cup. Here's Short. The freshman keeps it on the ground. Turns around for a shot, and Skinner able to make the save. Good-looking effort from Sam Meredith there, but instead it's Skinner. And we've talked about Makowitz having a great season. Skinner has put together a pretty solid campaign as well here in 2023. Skinner and Makowitz are goalies you would take at any program around the country, both aggressive off their line, really positionally sound. Bent into the box. Allie George heads the ball away. Outstanding play there by George. She flicked the ball away from goal, no threat at all, and then eventually got back to it. She's given a lot at that right back spot for the Hokies throughout the year. Long knock forward for the Hokies. Well, as predicted, Clemson here in the first six or seven minutes has possessed pretty much the entire time. And I really love to see the difference in strategy and tactics between these two teams because it stays consistent with how they played throughout the season, how we've seen them line up. It's the 4-3-3 for Clemson, possession style. And then Virginia Tech's going to play in that tight diamond in midfield and see if they can get some counters going. But we know Virginia Tech will play physical and, and give away some free kicks every now and then. Oh, Conti able to draw the foul there. Get another look at this foul. Yeah, late in there. She got to the ball first, got her foot to it, and then you saw coming in late was Visage. Oh, Chugger Adair wants the confirmation of what that foul was called for. Hokies, you see there, one of the most physical teams in the ACC, year in, year out. Looped in towards the six. Skinner trying to find the ball. Whistle blows will help out the Hokies anyway. And Skinner being pretty aggressive there to jump in before Meredith could head that ball in to give Clemson the 1-0 lead. I was going to say, there has to be a foul call there. It looks like she was impeded on that initial attempt at the save. That's such a tough assignment for any defense and a goalie. Sam Meredith up there listed at six foot. Even on a jump sometimes as a goalie, you might not beat her out on a header. Skinner's the type of goalie, though. She's going to be aggressive off of her line all game long. Break forward. Hokies want to foul. They'll get it this time with DeGuzman hitting the deck. So another free kick coming up for Virginia Tech, and this is what you're talking about, Josh. Virginia Tech might not get as many chances here, but what can they do when being gifted a foul like this? That was a hard tackle. I mean, we talked about physical play from the Hokies, and that's actually something I've always loved about Chuckers' team. They're going to play you physical. Kept low, Palkowski. And a volley there from Maltese. Goes wide left. Chugger Adair looking on for another year as Virginia Tech head coach, 13th season. That is a 150th win earlier this year with almost a decade mark of NCAA tournament appearances. And what a program. We talk about these two programs. It really is that. These are not these are not just teams. These are programs that these two coaches have built, and Chugger's done such a good job with this team and we talk about an identity of a team we talk about the physical play sometimes they give away fouls but man they are not going to let you breathe throughout the game these Virginia Tech teams what I've been impressed about these past few years all of them are physical all of them are going to play hard till the very final whistle and it's fun to watch as a fan sliding forward again flat came up a oh, free kick back now for Clemson There's Natalie Mitchell, who's been primary goal scorer for Virginia Tech this year with a few players out that have really been the big goal contributors, and especially Natalie Mitchell's first year. Tori Powell has announced no longer with the program this week. 
Taylor Price dealing with an injury has not played since that Boston College matchup. So it's been a lot of responsibility that's been put on Natalie Mitchell, and she's handled it very well. Two natural goal scorers that just know where to be, know how to get goals themselves. And Natalie Mitchell last year was the provider to those two. She really was more of an assist maker setting them up and did so well at that. And now she's got to learn kind of a new role. And she doesn't have to learn it. She knows how to score goals and has taken that mantle up along with so many of these midfielders for the Hokies. Foul called on Pelkowski. Hirschfeld able to draw that foul. Here comes a really threatening free kick for Clemson. And I told you before the game, Hirschfeld is going to cover every blade of grass in midfield. And this time she pops up where the right winger would usually be, just getting out, causing another wrinkle that your defense has to account for. You leave a foot in like that, and I have a feeling in this game we're going to see a lot of set pieces from free kicks given away just due to the physical nature of these two teams. And already seven fouls. Not even 12 minutes into this one. The left foot. No one on the end of it. So blows this time in favor of Virginia Tech. Yeah, make it eight fouls now. <laughs> it's not going to slow down. No. I mean, that's just the, the physicality of this Virginia Tech team is well noted. And it's something, too. It starts from the front line where they're really going to pressure those defenders for Clemson. And sometimes you'll get a poke away. We saw it with Maltese winning a physical duel up there. He'll poke it away, and you've got a chance to break on it. Wind's starting to whip in. Uh, you folks at home could potentially hear right now. Starting to feel like really the first true fall day in Blacksburg. Now that I say this, it's probably going to be 87 <laughs> degrees on Tuesday. But pretty cold here today in the mid-50s. What a ball. Anna, where can she finish? Right footer. Makowitz got a paw on it. Hokies corner. What a save there from Makowitz, just making sure that that one didn't creep into the side netting there. And Anna Weir, what timing on that run through. Perfect through ball, perfect timing to stay on side. And this is what you teach as a striker. Keep it low, put it to that back post and see what happens. And she forced Makowitz into an outstanding save. Big corner. Popped in the air, it's still loose. Makowitz fell down on it. Clemson can exhale now for just a moment. That ball was high in the air, seemingly just touched the stratosphere there, Josh. <laughs> and here come the Hokies again. Haugen, pass picked away. And I've seen this a lot from this Virginia Tech team throughout the season. They put those corner kicks right on the goalie. Skyers fouled. We're already at nearly 10 fouls here. And Caroline Conti has to be very wary of what she's doing with her hands there. Her arm came up and she smacked Eden Skyers right in the face. That one does not feel good. Definitely unintentional, but still, that's one you leave the hand high like that. It could have been a yellow card. Well, on top of that, with Skyers down. Hokies hoping to make sure the Jacksonville transfer is okay. She scored her first career goal on an Olympico against NC State. Now seems to be all right. Now a little bit of housekeeping with the clock has to be done at 31-39. Another look at this foul. Yeah, good touch by Skyers. And then, yeah, definitely unintentional. Just trying to shield was Caroline Conti. But again, that hand's up there really high in the head area and I think she's a little bit lucky on that one to, to not see yellow. Well, she stays on. Mitchell. Long shot. And Makowitz flies to the right to get it. And that's something Chugger Adair had talked to us before the game about 
taking shots from outside the box, not being afraid to let it fly, especially when there's a lot of traffic there. Good save by Makowitz, but I love the aggressiveness from DeGuzman there. Lots of confidence from the freshman DeGuzman. And something that when we talked about with Coach Adair a few days ago, he's really impressed with the confidence of his freshman. Because you saw that goal she scored a few nights ago against NC State. It's from distance. Right. There's really been I, Mitchell to Guzman up there in the midfield, not afraid to pull the trigger from very long distance. And Pelkowski has a good shot from outside the box, too. Really, those midfielders right behind your forwards, uh, they've been uh, not gun shy this season. Right. And a lot of credit to assistant Associate head coach Drew Kopp, Chugger told us Drew had really drilled with the midfielders and told them, hey, if there's a lot of bodies in front of the box, take a shot because the goalie's going to be screened and not see it. So Chugger and Drew drawing something up there, and the midfield scoring, I mean, it speaks for itself. Yeah, Emma Pelkowski, another name to watch out for. Doesn't get onto the score sheet a lot, but had that brace against Syracuse where the Hokies confidently won up in upstate New York. Look out for her to do something pivotal here today. Speaking of something pivotal, space now developing for St. George and Clemson. And that's a little wrinkle I didn't quite expect to see. I, I wasn't sure where Lane St. George would, would line up, if it would be Davis at left back. So it'll be St. George at left back. Davis is going to go in the center back role along with Duff. Um, Davis... In, the, in their last game had played in that left back spot. So it's not too four and four. She's, she can play back there, but a little bit different look for the Tigers. It's momentum cooking up now for Clemson. What a tackle, Avery Visage. Virginia Tech possesses now. Fantastic slide there to win the ball back. Foot race to the box. Looking for Meredith. Space again for the Hokies. What can the talented midfielder do now in Natalie Mitchell? You saw Hirschfeld tracking back again. I mean, that's she's going up against Mitchell, one of the best attackers for this Hokies team. Tracks her the whole way and pokes the ball so that Clemson can retain that possession and and that's her calling card, Hirschfeld winning the ball, starting the attack again for the Tigers. Here comes that attack again. Loads of space. Too far on the touch. Yeah, the idea was right, but just uh, a little bit too much on that one. I don't think anyone's going to catch that one. But you saw McKenna Morris getting into the attack. I mean... I am, I, I will say it unashamedly, I am a Hal Hirschfeld stan. <laughs> she, she is so good in midfield. Uh, just will cover so much, so much grass for you in midfield. And she's got the ACC accolades to, to tell for it, too. You go down the list of her career, so many ACC teams she's made. What a cross. Tatum short. Wasn't able to connect on that pass. Throw in Hokies. And again, Clemson, if they can work that ball side to side, get some crosses in, they've got the types of wingers that can really put in a service. That one just over the head of Meredith, too. And then Short just lurking there on the back post. Hirschfeld. Out to the wing now. Skyer is on defense. Skyers able to keep that ball in play for the Hokies, but the Clemson Tigers can just reset now. Curving into the box. And it will be a corner. Oh, big chances developing now for Clemson. Yeah, that time looks like Morris driving in. And you asked me before the game, how is it that an outside back 
is on the stat sheet as often as she is. And you see it right there. She's going to overlap. She's going to get in the center of midfield and connect with the other midfielders. Uh, she's more of an attacker than she is an outside back. Yeah, McKenna Morris, the leading goal scorer for the team. Six goals, five assists. And it will be a goal kick for Virginia Tech. And Coach Eddie Rodwanski was hugely high on McKenna Morris. He said she might be one of the best, if not the best player in the ACC. Like, he was unabashed about how good this player was. You see her jump out on tape, too. And in attack, she's going to kind of tuck in at times and start to play as a center midfield for you. She might overlap. She keeps the defense guessing, and he really praised her soccer smarts in doing that. Uh, she played more attacking positions earlier in her, her career, and it lets her figure out how to exploit the other team on offense, and then defensively, where those attacking players might move. She really is kind of the complete package at outside back. Yeah, Coach Rodwanski, we talked to a lot of coaches. I'm not sure if we've talked with a coach that was as confident or about his or her team than we were with Coach right. Rodwanski this year. He w in every player, every position, he said, hey, it's really a we. It's not a me team. We are a complete team. And he was hugely confident in their style of play. And uh, like you mentioned in that Virginia game, they tied 1-1, but he said... You know, we felt great about the way right. we played. Even in a draw, he knows they generate chances, and it's just kind of a matter of time before they get some goals from them. Now Virginia with six shots the entire game. Hokies with two now, the first 20 minutes. Virginia Tech has put together some pretty solid tackles, and look at that ambitious lob pass to Weir. And, and Clemson just decides to boot it over to the Hokie sideline. Even though it doesn't come off, that ball teases the back line and forces them to make a decision where they clear it away. So those forwards are going to keep pressing, and now we've got fresh legs from a player we know can <laughs> put it in the back of the net. Yeah, here comes Taylor Bryan. Every time she comes on for Virginia Tech, and we saw it against NC State a few nights ago, makes a difference and adds a spark for the Hokies. We saw her start a few times this year, coming in as a reserve here against the Tigers, though. So Taylor Bryan, a, a player who has dealt with injuries early on in her career, came on last year most notably and had that huge game and a huge goal against Virginia to tie it up. A look at those forwards for Virginia Tech. We are getting the start as a freshman, got a couple of big goals. Maltese, a normal starter for the Hokies, but Taylor Bryan really can add a lot coming off of the bench. She gives you a lot of energy, and Chugger was pretty honest with us in the, in the fact that they haven't found that forward pairing really yet. They've rotated out a lot and, and tried some different things. We know those three that, that were shown on screen are so talented at the attacking spot, but what's the best balance for this Virginia Tech team? And they've even tried Visage at times at that forward position just to give a little hold-up play and something different for teams to think about. Uh, it'll be interesting with these games in the back half of the season. What the two are that start in the rest of these games. What a confident touch, and Brian almost snatched the ball back for Virginia Tech. Take it on back to Skinner. A good header up to short. Meredith now, the freshman from Nevada. Short, looking for help. Conti wanted a foul, will not get it. Here come the Hokies with space into Guzman. The utter theft of that last ball. <laughs> what a play from De Guzman, tracking back, and then Conti thought she had the free shot, the free one to take from outside the box, but De Guzman, that's the kind of work rate you want to see from your midfielders. Skyers for Pelkowski now. Yeah, watch it here. Conti just completely unaware, and De Guzman gets the foot in first. Beautiful play from the freshman. Three goals, four assists, second on the team in that goal-scoring margin. 
And that's one of the things with both of these teams. It seems like both of these programs have done a great job of keeping players around for a long time. They've got a great balance of senior leadership and junior leadership. And then you bring in these freshmen that start almost every game for you, too, that are capable of things like this. It's it, these, these coaching staffs and these programs have done such a good job of finding that balance, and it's like they just reload year after year. Conti now. McKenna Morris. It's going to be a good ball for Clemson. Rolls wide left, and it will be a corner kick. Just a beautiful setup there. And that was the best shot for Conti so far in this one. That is an epitome of the Clemson way of building that attack. You go from Morris out to your winger there, Tobia, and then just kind of lurking, getting that last-minute run in, Caroline Conti. Um, it's hard to account for as a defense, that late-running midfielder, and looks like a certain goal. Kept on the ground and cleared away. Was Danny Davis, another freshman on the corner for Clemson. Target there was Davis again. Look at Haugen sliding in. Haugen and Visage just steadfast at center back. Those two are so solid, and they're going to slide in. This is a big game for these two. They've got a lot of defensive work and communication with their back line they're going to have to do, and that time... Haugen just said, I'm going to take this one and slide it away. I think getting a talking to about a little pushing and pulling there with Sam Meredith. And it's already been a physical matchup, and that just seems like a common theme of every Virginia Tech game, how physical it is. Another one is Allie George goes to the grass. Free kick Hokies. See Allie George there. That's such an interesting shift to me. She was playing in that forward line with Sophie Maltese her first two seasons here with Virginia Tech. And now George playing right back. I was actually, we were talking about the Lexington Sporting Club games <laughs> I got to call. She was playing with Racing Louisville um, in the, the Louisville soccer team in the USLW, and she played right back with that team as well. So certainly capable of it, but so you seeing her as like that target forward, hold up forward, and it shows you the versatility of so many of these players, including George. To the middle again for Clemson. Trying to win the ball for the Tigers is Camp. Another free kick for the Hokies. There's Lauren Gogol with the hold-up play. That was, that was pure Lauren Gogol in midfield. I mean, just bodying out two players, holding the ball up, and then winning the free kick for the Hokies. I, that position so underrated because those players don't get on the stat sheet as often. She's a solid, solid anchor there in midfield. Ayn Conti in the middle again. Pass was unable to connect with her, so back to Bourne Camp. Kept on the ground. Conti! What a goal! Caroline Conti setting up perfectly for Clemson. And for Conti, puts the Tigers on the board. The graduate student from Greenville, South Carolina. Fifth goal of the season. That was so similar to the first chance that Conti had, where, again, they swing it out to the winger, put the ball back into the box, and this time Conti's already in the box. She has to come over and get to the ball. What a strike to put it upper corner. Nothing that Skinner's going to do on that one but that's all in the build-up play from this Clemson Tigers team. So now she has scored in four of the last six games for the Tigers. Fifth goal of the season here in the 28th minute. And now it seems to suck a little bit of the wind out of Virginia Tech where the Hokies were possessing and creating a lot of space there in the midfield, just couldn't finish with a decent chance. Conti, it did seem like it was only a matter of time with how open she was, she was going to finish on one of those chances. Right, and Skinner, uh, th there's a question there. Is that one going to sneak in or not? Maybe it's going to go wide or hit the post because it was, it was hit hard. It was hit well into that side netting, and 
as a goalie, you barely even have time to react when a ball's in the box like that and someone hits it that hard. And man, what a finish. But that's what we've seen Clemson do here. They've gotten it out to the wing and a lot of credit to Jenna Tobia as well out on that wing. She has driven in a lot of good services from that right-hand side. Here's Weir now trying to find the equalizer for the Hokies. Goal kick coming up. And a substitution coming in for Clemson as well. There's Lyles who had that equalizer against Virginia after the Tigers gave up a goal early, scored in the 33rd minute. See if Virginia Tech can maybe win the ball back in midfield and get a quick break. I think, and kind of what we assumed, but that's the way they're going to have to get back into this game. Win a ball, play it up early, and they've had a couple successful long balls that find those forwards. Good ball. Clemson go up 2-0 here. And they get a cross just over wow. the post. Well, Clemson has just been able to feed the ball in at will here in the last few minutes. That's Winner, the sophomore. Tobia again from the service. I mean, what else can you ask for from your your right winger? She has put in so many quality crosses, and that's one Winner is going <laughs> to look back on the film and say, how did I not finish that off? Well, Tabia, the freshman from New Jersey, once again, a common theme we're talking about, physicality for Virginia Tech. A common theme for Clemson is not only their physicality, but how high Redwanski has them as far as his perception of their play. Tabia has had such a solid year as a freshman for Clemson. Tobia now with eight assists on the season. If she's not freshman all ACC, I would be utterly stunned. Um, she's probably going to be all ACC. Uh, on uh, maybe first team. I don't know. You could put so many right. of these Clemson players in those teams. Uh, she, she will definitely be freshman all ACC and probably on one of those other lists as well. Probably top drawer soccer freshman in, in the best starting 11 for them too. I mean, she is outstanding. A lot of, like you said, she's got some physical presence. She's got some speed, but her technical ability and <laughs> the way she puts balls into the box and she can score herself too it's extremely tough to deal with as a defense Tatum Short the freshman working on the upperclassman George just now joining us Conti scored moments ago to give Clemson the 1-0 lead now for Clemson we talked about a solid mix of upperclassmen talent, but look at these freshmen getting so much playing time to be a really the, the big one that we noted, but Tatum Short not far behind with Danny Davis there as well. Right, and Danny Davis playing generally left back or sometimes center back for this team. So you've got someone similar to McKenna Morris where it doesn't really matter where she lines up. She's simply going to be really good at whatever that position is. And today it so happens to be center back. You'll see... Davis serve balls into the box though from these set pieces uh, killer left foot there's Morris 
Conti now. Skinner there on one hop. And you know, as much as we've talked about Clemson dominating possession, they've taken a lot of shots, you know, the score still 1-0, right? So if you're the Hokies, you still got a shot to maybe pull one back before the end of this first half. And we've seen them play a few promising long through balls up to their forwards. It's just a matter of finding that opportunity and capitalizing on it. One of the back line for the Tigers. 12 minutes left here in this first half. 1-0 Clemson, but as far as the gameplay, it, it certainly has felt very even between these two teams. First time the Tigers have been to Blacksburg since 2018. And when we talked about that with the coaches, Coach Radwanski had, had kind of laughed. It's just like, <laughs> oh, how the schedule is, is shaking out. I'm sure Chugger's not excited about the fact that we've it came to our place for the past four years. But it's true. You look at it from 2019 on. This has been a yearly occurrence where the Hokies have had to go to Clemson to take on the Tigers as opposed to playing it here. Yeah, Eddie Radwanski told us that he thought Chugger was going to buy an Airbnb <laughs> <laughs> down there and with how many times they had visited Clemson. And, you know, the every time they play, and that's something, again, Eddie told us as well, every time they play, this is a tough matchup for Clemson. It's a tough matchup for Virginia Tech. It's, it's going to be a close game, and these two teams are going to keep fighting throughout it. Uh, in an entertaining game. It's such a good contrast of styles. Winner into the six. Whistle blows, and Clemson's going to retreat back now. The thing I've been impressed with from Clemson is, is the running into the box from their midfield players, just the willing running to get into that box and get into position. I, obviously, it showed itself perfectly with that Caroline Conti goal and some of the chances they've created, but that's something that not every team has their center midfielders run that hard into the box and be in that position in the right way. Uh, they've certainly figured it out, and that's something with the diverse amount of goal scoring they have is readily apparent. On a Makowitz. And they'll be comfortable doing this for the rest of the half. I mean, they can pass around the back line, and that's something they really like to do anyway. So they are enjoying where the game is currently. Another sub jogging in for the Hokies. Weir's going to get a break. Now for so Emma Stanley trying to add a spark for Virginia Tech. Again, remember, no Taylor Price, who has dealt with injuries all year, has not played in a few weeks for Virginia Tech. So Hokies going a little deeper into the bench than they normally expected. Taylor Bryan. Bryan tried to get there. Saved away by the defense of Clemson. It will be a corner, though, for the Hokies. What a defensive effort to get back there and slide in. Mackenzie Duff, who is a senior leader on this back line and cuts out so many things. What a poke away that is because that's a 1v1 to goal if she doesn't get there. So take a look now, Josh. Eden Skyers, remember, she scored her first goal of her career in college with an Olympico against NC State. Wind whipping all around Thompson Field. Could she try to get this one up in the air and bend it into the net again? It's going to be close. Makowitz able to make the save. Well, that's the strategy. Maybe it's not to score the goal every single time. That'd be great. But Eden Skyers puts that ball close to the goalkeeper and close to the goal line just to make things uncomfortable in there. Makowitz is the sort of goalie that is assured from those types of crosses in. They've got enough big bodies, though, the Hokies, that that's not a bad strategy at all. Here comes Skyers again. Long sprint forward for Clemson. 
Hokies defense getting back there. It's loose and a corner kick. And what a duel that was between Wenner and Haugen. Big corner coming up with just about seven minutes left to go here in the first half. What a run there from Emma Wenner. She covered a lot of distance, good pace there, and Haugen's had some good interventions on that back line. A lot of tracking over and having to do some dirty work. And then a collision for trouble after that as well. Once again, Davis on the corner. McKenna Morris. A soft volley to Skinner. Haley Engel and Josh Brown here with you on the ACC Network Extra for a fun one. Clemson trying to add another win against the Hokies, undefeated against this Virginia Tech program since 2014. McKenna B. Virginia Tech trying to pick up a ranked victory against the top 10 team. You know, Chugger with that. Emma Stanley substitution. Just trying something a little bit different. Emma had about 25 minutes in that game against NC State and hadn't seen time before that in the season. She played five matches last year. That's another player, obviously some good club and high school experience, but just giving you another wrinkle in someone else who can kind of shift the way that forward line looks. And it, it allows you to put Mitchell in positions like this. Right. What a great ball that was. Hokies adding pressure to Clemson here. Yeah, so Stanley certainly, she pushes Mitchell up into that forward position. And now, of course, as I'm saying that, Mitchell comes off the field. <laughs> but, you know, again, it gives you that little different look at the forward spot and something else for Clemson to account for. There's Valente coming in. Stanley now. Skyers wanted the ball. She was open, but instead the Hokies go back to midfield. Hokies want to call. Brian is down. That's a rough fall from Taylor Bryan. She got to that one first and wins the free kick, and you've got to credit the direct ball again. And it was Haugen with the long ball in initially. It kind of bounced. Man, that's that's a late one in there, too. That That's another one. We've seen a couple of fouls that, again, unintentional, but that's one that sort of feels like a yellow card to me. So Skyers with the free kick for the Hokies. Trying to set up for an equalizer here. Right at Makowitz. Actually had to make that save. It will be a corner kick. That one just floated in the air. Almost snuck in, Josh. That was a shot on goal. There's no doubt. Skyers was trying to do that. Just catch the goalie kind of leaning toward that back post where all the players are queuing up and forced a great save there from from Makowitz. Oh, look at this one. Hey, why not? Looking for a head. Still loose. Brian. Stanley now, but instead kicked away by Clemson. He's retreating back on defense. Three minutes left. Here's Tatum Short. St. George now. Left footer. 
Visage hitting the dirt to head that one away. A good play there by Ava Arango coming on and uh, she'll give you some goal scoring threat and that time tracking back and doing well to try and win that ball. Maria Manousa is coming in. Sophomore from North Carolina. Just talking about that depth again, Josh. There's another player that can trot in and make a difference. Scored a goal as a reserve against the Hurricanes. Good contributor last year as well. Two goals and two assists for her. Started a lot of games. And played in almost all of them as well. And the confidence in possession by Clemson. As a team, sometimes it gets deflating. You just don't see the ball as much. You don't get as many touches. Virginia Tech's got to stay patient and just be ready to spring on any mistake that happens. Minute and a half left. Tell you what, Haugen and Visage have been in on some hard tackles there on the back line, some sliding challenges, interventions. Those two have been really, really good for the Hokies today so far. Could tech get off a good shot here before halftime intermission. tackle there again visage and haugen at time visage going sliding in they've been so good at the tail end of this first half physical matchup here in blacksburg clemson though courtesy caroline conti and her fifth goal of the season that's where we are right now at halftime it's one nil tigers the b clemson and the eke forward in this acc championship race Lots of anticipation here before the start of the second half. Samantha Meredith with a pass back. We are underway. Gotta love the commitment of the shirtless guys out in the oh, yeah. colder temperatures. Well, at least they had a little bit of daylight there in that first half that can <laughs> act as some sort of pseudo warmth here. The clouds are starting to roll in. It's already been windy today. Like we said, really our first peek into true fall weather in Blacksburg. You know, I will say they stay active, though. Yeah. They're jumping. They're moving. Uh, once once you get going, you kind of don't feel it anymore. <laughs> well, they have, one, they have one person with them that was like, I, you know, I really appreciate you guys' passion, but there's somebody standing with them with a sweatshirt on. It's like, you guys are nuts. Yeah, I will support with warmth. <laughs> Now you see Clemson, Morris is essentially playing as another center midfielder here. You'll see it when the ball gets a little little closer to that midfield. Toby is staying all the way out on the line and Morris just adding into the attack. Haugen, trying to track that ball down and so is Meredith. Skinner able to pick it up for the Hokies. Well, now time to revisit Brown's breakdown. So where do you think we are now into the second half? How has it came to fruition? I think it was Clemson exactly what he expected. The patience and possession, they possessed extremely well in that first half. 
and they had a nice finishing touch on the goal. They probably could have had a couple more. There was one really good chance at the start. Um, and then Virginia Tech, they've taken a, three sh a few shots and stuck pretty well with this Clemson offense. That's hard to do. And Visage, I imagine that some of these injuries sting a little bit more as the temperature continues to drop. It's been such a physical game with 16 fouls in the first half. He's gifted a ball there from Mitchell. Tech, you fans wanted a handball call. It's a great first time ball. Once again from Dory Haugen, just the direct attempt over the top to Mitchell. And Mitchell to me looking like she's playing more of that forward role in this half. Oh, look at this. Oh my. That looks like a hand to me. Yeah, just how that was just developed in real time. It looked like that could have been a PK coming up for Virginia Tech. Hirschfeld stuck the arm out there. What is interesting, though, that nobody for Virginia Tech took any time to argue. It must have been a, a weird angle for the referee and for the Virginia Tech players, but on that second look, it was really clear. Her hand was outstretched, and right. the ball hit it. Clemson dodging a bullet on that. And again, that all comes from a direct ball from Dory Hauken just trying something over the top. There's Danny Davis. It was bent in there with a lot of velocity. Skinner, you could hear that ball <laughs> rip into the gloves of the keeper for Virginia Tech. There's Warren in. Trying to get the ball back. Lost it. We saw Weir making the charging run through to try and force the defenders to chase her. And that, she and Mitchell doing a really good job early on in this half, making the run behind the defense. And they're either going to demand the ball or pull a defender away. Flag came up anyway. Conti was offside. Conti, lone goal scorer in this one. In the 28th minute, her third career goal against Virginia Tech, dating back to her freshman and sophomore years. So that was back in 2019, the first time she scored against the Hokies. That's another thing that is going to take some time getting used to, and at least in our jobs moving forward, is don't have to factor in that that COVID redshirt year anymore because well, some of these players for Clemson and Virginia Tech have been here for such a long <laughs> right. time. I swear I've seen players that have been at a school for seven years right. with, this, with this craziness with the timelines. What a ball by Warden. Oh, the flag came up. Oh, Virginia Tech frustratingly goes back into the bleachers for this one. Everyone in maroon and orange thought that Weir could have been on. Virginia Tech doing such a good job possessing the ball, passing it around. Mm, yeah. That's tough. Yeah, I think Weir's a step or two off there. Is she on now, though? For Mitchell, wasn't a good enough touch. So the Hokies with those breakaway speed, with their breakaway speed on those last two plays, getting Clemson to try to readjust on defense for a moment. Natalie Mitchell's got seven goals this year. Could her eighth be the equalizer? Good exchange there. Weir had the right idea to just give it back to Mitchell and see if she could make the breaking run through. And 
Virginia Tech's shape has changed a little bit in the second half, too. It's Weir and Mitchell at the forward spots, and DeGuzman and Voronin more at wing midfield, so they don't have that attacking mid underneath in the diamond. Pelkowski and Gogol playing just as more holding mids, and that it's, it's a different wrinkle, again, from Chugger, just trying something out to test this back line. Another ambitious pass. Meredith. Tatum short. Tangled up. George won the ball. Tobia got it back. Now George. bit more life for Virginia Tech here in the early moments of the second half. Chugger Adair a bit frustrated. You can see on the sideline with that pass. You know, and I think what else this Virginia Tech change in shape gives you is an ability to track those center midfielders a little more carefully as well for Clemson. Skyers came in with a tackle. McKenna Morris, the senior, still sprinting forward. Leading goal scorer for Clemson. You can see why with her confident ball handling. And now called with a foul. What a run, though, from McKenna Morris. And that's the individual ability she possesses. You could see, I mean, she could be playing as a winger or a forward. Uh, she, she can truly play anywhere. And that time she's got the license to go on a run and make something happen. And... Stepping in again. That was Visage that time. Visage and Haugen have been outstanding for the majority of this game. What a ball. Comes short. Good move, stays with it on Visage. A lot of intensity for Virginia Tech defensively here. Rowan Hokies. Sort of felt in that first five minutes. The Hokies held possession for most of it, and now Clemson settling back into what they're comfortable doing, and that's just swinging the ball around, trying to find that opening in that overload. There's Warren. Warren trying to win the ball back. Clemson maintains possession. Hirschfeld. Danny Davis. Through ball. Goal kick. And a lot of credit to the Virginia Tech back line and the midfielder staying disciplined there because that was... An excellent spell of possession by Clemson. Moving the ball side to side. Their midfielders were checking in and out of space, trying to find an opening. And eventually they forced a long ball that didn't connect. So Hokies repelling the Clemson attack that time. It'll be a, a test to see how much longer can Virginia Tech continue to repel that attack, though. Can they start getting something to go their way? And we've seen them try to move the ball up to Weir a few times. But Virginia Tech has not been able to maintain possession consistently here in the second half. Can this be a change, though? And with Voronin in, in, in the starting 11 for this second half, you get a player who's confident on the ball, can play easy passes back and forth with your forwards and midfielders. Gives them a ability to pass and move the ball a little bit more. Oh, 
Hirschfeld being pressured by Mitchell. And Clemson has maintained so much poise defensively. Yeah, this is the position as Virginia Tech. No, no passes getting up from that center back there and force them to go backwards. I almost thought maybe there could be a chance to break on that from Virginia Tech if they win the ball back. That was a warning, a gift for the Hokies. What can they do? And Mitchell just whipped there. Meanwhile, Ellie George with a pass back to her goalkeeper. Throw in Tigers. No, stays in. Here's Weir. Again, a lot of possession with the backs from Clemson, but Virginia Tech doing enough to turn that ball over and win the throw in for themselves. Hokies connecting on a few of these long passes and that bit of offensive momentum short lived. Free kick Clemson. If you're the Hokies, you would like to see Mitchell get a little more involved on the ball. There's been a lot of those seeking long balls, looking for her over the top, maybe playing into her feet a little bit more, giving her a chance to run at this defense. Will pay off a little bit more for what she's able to do. Skyers with a meg there. Weir with space. Bends the ball in. Loose in the box. That was just two solid plays there that both went Virginia Tech's way between Skyers and Weir. But Clemson, once again, that defensive poise so strong. Here's to Guzman. Trying a little 1v1 there. She's so skilled in doing that, trying to take players on and might have been a free kick shout. Throw in Clemson. And the Tigers bring in another substitute. It's going to be Sydney Manerick. Coming in for Lane St. George. Looks like, actually, looks like that's going to be Morris. She comes in for it. Right. And no, nope, Morris is going to be throwing the ball in. Yeah, Excuse I think me. Morris is switching sides as well. So she's going to shift to left back. And then Maneric comes out to the right side. And an, again, another wrinkle. Both these coaches just doing a few little tweaks here. We saw it with Chugger in the formation at the start of the second half. And now you get an outside back switch. Someone coming on at right back and Morris going at left back. On the ground. A bump there. Meredith trying to make it 2 0. Can't get a shot off. Whistle blows, and it will be a corner kick. But look at the physicality. Conti looking for a brace there. I could have made it 2 0. And instead, whistle blows a hokey player now down. And it is Pelkowski. What a scramble there in the box as the, the ball came in. It looks like Meredith almost had an open opportunity to get a shot off. And then Pel Pelkowski, Haugen, Gogol, so many players just sliding in, seeing if they can get a touch to it. Yeah, I think Gogol came in and actually caught Pelkowski. Oof. And players just going flying. And again, that's that's the type of team 
that Virginia Tech has. They are going to go sliding in, no regard for their own bodies at times. And good to see Pel Pelkowski back up and kick him. Now here we go, yet another corner. The sixth one for the Tigers. Danny Davis from outside the box. So less than half an hour to go in this one. It's been a fun one so far. Just one goal. That was from Conti in the 28th minute. And Taylor Bryan add the spark now for Tech. I think Taylor Bryan gives you exactly what Anna Weir was doing and gives you the fresh legs off the bench. Going to try and get in behind the back line. Weir kept trying to stretch him out side to side and make those through runs. Haugen being pressured. Ball won by Mitchell, just for a moment. Now Pelkowski. Through ball, just off target. Loose towards the net, that's in. But a whistle blows. The goal will not count. Or will it? Virginia Tech not celebrating. Yeah, handball, and Taylor Bryan knows it as well. So a handball wipes the goal off of the board. They even started the LED lights here. <laughs> yeah, they started Zombie Nation just a, a tad too early there. <laughs> Some good Euro crowd vibes, though, for a second. And one of the shirtless guys had already started on a, on a high-five tour in the middle of the of the stands <laughs> and had to be told the goal didn't count. So get another look at this. Oh. Yeah, into her elbow. She had her arm up, unintentional there. I mean, hey, though, if you are Chugger, you're saying keep running at them, Taylor. Keep doing that. It, it was good pressure by Mitchell initially to sort of force that pass back and then Taylor Bryan running up putting some pressure on. Hey, next time, maybe that comes off her head, maybe it comes off her body, and it goes in the back of the net. So, for Brian, kind of threw up her hands to just defend her face. Yeah. And if you're Makowitz, you certainly feel lucky that that ball did go off of her arm because if it if it hits her in the rib, that's a goal for Virginia right, Tech. Right, right, and that's the work rate you want to see from your forwards pressure from the front and see if you can cause a costly turnover and it almost happened there. Inching closer for Tech. I wanted a handball again and well, that's two. Yeah, both of them really unlucky. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> just try to go in and get it. Brian, more touches than the goalkeepers in the past two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> that hits her foot. Wants a foul. And does not get it. And the officials have not... Really been scared to blow the whistle either. There's Gogol. <laughs> Meredith has space. Short now. Lyles with a touch. And Haugen had to race all the way back to win that ball back for the Hokies. Haugen and Visage just having to get pulled back and forth with midfielders running through and the forward. Meredith's done a great job of checking out wide, checking back, getting the ball, and then Morris on the charge again. Kenna Morris working through two Hokies. Allie George. 
to midfield. Short now back. Morris. Off the body, Meredith. Lyles with a rip into Visage. To be a no whistle, hokey ball. Mitchell with the Tigers racing behind her. Now a throw in for Tech. Another look at this tackle, Josh. Oh man, solid, gets the foot in there. That's what you like to see. I, I love a good slide tackle and that one was perfectly timed. And a lot of good sustained possession in the attacking third from Clemson, but Virginia Tech continuing to weather these storms. Natalie Mitchell. That ball over the top. Haugen and Visage have continued to look for it. Just play it long, see if Mitchell or Brian can burst onto it past the defense. And, you know, I've given Haugen and Visage a lot of credit for their defense today. <laughs> the center backs for Clemson have also been outstanding. Duff and Davis have been nothing short of solid back there. Gogol called for the foul. And Duff mixing with the underclassman Danny Davis. Who started in all 14 games for the Tigers this year. That's, that always gives you a good feeling as a team when you've got a freshman who can contribute so solidly. And that's really a tough tackle there for Mitchell. And Hirschfeld down. Need another second to try to walk this off. This was Mitchell coming in hard. Yeah, great turn there from Hirschfeld. And then I think Mitchell just kind of clipped the back of her heel there. Here comes Conti. What a ball to Lyles. Lyles, a save from Skinner. And knocked away by Skyers. Corner kick coming up for Clemson. That is an outstanding save from Aaliyah Skinner. She, she absolutely does the right thing here. Comes out, makes herself big, and just gets in the way. Look how quick she comes off her line here. Three big steps, and you just got to stay big. A lot of keepers will go to the ground too early and allow that chip over the top. And then Skyers, you know when your goalie comes out, you keep running back towards your end line, and she makes the save too. That is a huge play for the Hokies. Got to stay strong on defense. Skinner slaps the ball to the other side of the net. It will be another corner for Clemson. Emma Stanley runs in. So does Valente. Those fresh legs in the forward line. Stanley and Valente will now get a chance to probably chase some of those long balls from Haugen and Visage. Well, Skinner, will this be a save that energizes Virginia Tech? to a flurry of goals potentially in the second half. She did so against NC State, but Clemson certainly a different opponent. And Clemson goes 0 for 2 on those corners there. So Virginia Tech can breathe for a second. And Virginia Tech can count themselves lucky on that one. Excellent service from Danny Davis. And Bornkamp was hanging out uncontested on that header. And I'm pretty sure Danny Davis has taken corners now with her right foot and her left foot. Wow. That's impressive from the freshman. Ambidextrous on the corner kicks. I haven't really been able to talk that much about Lyles, and it seems as if Lyles has created a good amount of chances here in the second half, particularly in the last two minutes. Had a good ball right there that was almost taken into the attacking third for the Tigers. 
she was denied that goal by Skinner, but she's put herself in the right position, and that's that depth you talked about. Uh, Lyles didn't start in the first half, and you can switch her in with Conti or with Camp, and she gives you the same level, that same tactical awareness to get into the box and get into the right positions. Short. Foul called on Short as her and Pelkowski went to the grass. Hokies take the free kick quickly. Again to the back. Born camp loading up a pass to short. Solid collision there. Stays with Morris. Short. Lost the ball. Visage won it. Oh, free kick. Short on top of that ball after she fell on it. So the dangerous play. Uh, you saw the 1v1 ability though from short. She took that long touch it almost paid off for her on the 1v1 opportunity and it does feel as if though if Clemson scores here in these next 20 minutes with how the Tigers have played if Virginia Tech is unable to find an answer 2-0 could seem unsurmountable but Warren trying to change that with a ball back line and once again Taylor Bryan doing sometimes what's thankless work running in behind the defense and trying to get a poke on it uh, Born Camp getting up to get that ball away from Brian. Born Camp with tremendous hustle there. She's tracking all the way back and has to make the maybe goal saving tackle in that instance. And she knew she was going to pay the price with Taylor Bryan bearing right down on her. And it's Stan Lee. Skyers wants the ball down here. Stead to Warren. I like that ball in to Pelkowski that time from Doria Haugen trying to look for feet instead of the long one over the top as the Hokies have so often done in the second half. Under 20 minutes left. Otrodwanski going into the bench. Manus is coming on for Tatum Short. And Renee Lyles also goes to the bench. Emily Bruff coming on. She's, uh, it, you know, you go down the list and you see all these talented players, and they had talented youth careers before they came to college. And she's one that I, w I was so shocked by. She played club at Liverpool and Man United in England. And, and then she, she made a professional debut for Liverpool and, and was the second youngest player to ever play for that club at the pro level. Wow. Um, and now you get to come over and play high-level high Division I soccer. So you know she's got, uh, she's got some chops along with many of these other freshmen and sophomores that play for this Clemson team. I wonder how that transition from playing youth ball at Manchester United and then to Liverpool, because, you know, they're famously two clubs that really get along. <laughs> <laughs> no animosity yeah, there, no, I'm no, sure. No. 
And there it is again, that direct ball in. Stanley checks all the way back, gets it to feet, and then Virginia Tech's able to move it again. Olkowski off of the chest. Throw in Hokies. Trying to manufacture a shot on goal here. Clemson's defense has been so utterly tough against Virginia Tech and a few breakaway instances. To be a robbed by Haugen there. Hokies ball back to Skinner. These center backs for both teams are just outstanding. And Bornkamp slots into the center back position. That's something that I had missed happened a few minutes earlier. Morris, ninth corner kick of the match coming up for Clemson. Morris again, 1v1, wants to take players on, essentially acting as the left wing in that position. And tricky little nutmeg there to get through and win the corner kick. And trying the long touch around, and good play by Allie, Allie George to get back there. Close to the net, straight at Skinner. Skinner so commanding off of her line, you could hear her yell keeper all the way up here. Solid showcasing of goalkeeping talent in this game from both teams with Makowitz and Skinner. The game ended right now. It would be the ninth shutout of the year for the Clemson goalkeeper. And Makowitz, her leading shutout category in the ACC, leading that entire shutout category, I mm -hmm. should say. Makowitz in this back line, the communication, just the, the solidity of that back line, just not a ton of really scary chances generated by the teams they play against and Danny Davis the freshman there what an outstanding center back play from her today and the flexibility of her being able to play left back left center back and now Born Camp slotting into the defensive side of things too uh, the flexibility the depth from this Clemson team they're a force to be reckoned with the ball by Brian. Comes Warren. Something developing for Tech for a moment. Polkowski and Warren in training. We're trading the ball around. Helkowski now had some space, but the flag came up. It did look like she timed that run a little bit too early. It was past the back line. Again, discipline from Clemson. The two center backs stay where they're at. They let Pelkowski go. And they knew she was offside by a pretty good margin there. Oh, wow, yep. That's by about six feet. Right. That's the type of run. If you're Virginia Tech, you need, though, you need someone bursting through and at least making the defense think about it. Winner. Now a, an onslaught of subs coming in. Weir returns, DeKuzman returns, and Natalie Mitchell jogs on as well. Emma Stanley, Visage, both trotting off. And Ella Valente going off as well. Uh, that's Mackenzie Duff, sorry Josh, coming on for Clemson. That's certainly a change. Allie George is going to slot to center back, it looks like, and maybe a three-back system for Virginia Tech as, as we saw Visage go off. So now changing things up. Winner. And a scoot out of the double team. Chipped forward. And Eric. To be is open now. 
to Bia. So now a goal kick for Virginia Tech, but as another Clemson sub runs on for the Tigers, Hokie switching it up into that three center back look, or that three back look, like you said. What exactly do you think is behind that decision? Getting more players forward. You see De Guzman come back on. She's going to be more attacking. She might kind of slot in and give you a right back, but she's going to play more right midfield. Um, and it's just getting more players forward to try and find that equalizing goal. Yeah, this, this is going to turn into more of a 3-4-3 three, three now with the three center backs. And you've got three forward players, two wide midfielders, and really Pelkowski and, and Gogol just going to hold as your two center midfields right in front of the three back line. Uh, throw in coming up with 11 minutes to go. Weir had a few breakaway chances in the beginning of this second half. Now trying to win the ball back in the corner for the Hokies. And another throw in for Tech. Yeah, I like the decision to leave Taylor Bryan on as well with the work rate she's had up there. Well, nothing can leak through this defense. That's Bourne Camp now, and she's going to take it herself. Hirschfeld, excuse me. Bruff. Skinner had to stretch out to get that ball. The Guzman wins the foot race to the soccer ball. Nine and a half minutes, Virginia Tech winless against Clemson since 2014. Can they find an equalizer here to at least make this a result in the final 10 minutes? Or will it be Clemson who comes out with another win against this young team from Blacksburg? There's the freshman Weir. the end of that pass. Miscommunication there between De Guzman, Brian, and, and even Mitchell was kind of in the hole there waiting for that ball to come to feet. De Guzman looking for the through run and something a little more aggressive. And this is uh, when Virginia Tech pushes their players up. I mean, it, it's going to look like they've got five players attacking that back line when Warren in and De Guzman go up. It, it's going to get aggressive here at the end of the game with, with that many players playing forward. I mean, even George and Skyers are pushing a little bit on that back line and really just leaving Gogol and, and Haugen back there. What a ball up for Clemson. Winner creating space, showcasing the speed against the Hokies and forces a corner. Great speed there from Wenner and going right at the defense. Haugen again, tracking over, making a tackle. No one's taking a kick. Another corner and Clemson taking their time, but the clock is now stopped. So there's no benefit into this procrastination. Here comes Morris. Tenth corner kick, Josh. They keep getting the ball to the wings, and every time they've taken a player 1v1, it generates an opportunity to cross it in or deflect off for a corner. And that was a lot closer right. than I think 
a lot of Hokies thought it was going to be. That one almost drifted in, almost a Olympico to match Eden Skyers in the last game for Virginia Tech. Morris just sort of drifted that towards the back post. Comes Gogol. No space being allowed by Clemson here. Hokies have to get crafty with passing to move this ball forward. Seven minutes to go. On the cross. Mitchell now. Lofted pass for Weir. And it seems as if that has been well, the story of the second half for Virginia Tech. Hokies had the right idea. The touches just weren't quite perfect enough. The long ball has just been a little bit too long, and it, even when they come short, now Clemson's doing a really good job of cutting out short passes into the forward player's feet. Center mids tracking those runs well. That's one goal in the 28th minute on the score sheet so far in this one. Caroline Conti, as it stands right now, with a game winner that happened in the first half. Haugen now. That's at Bourne Camp. What a ball. And a goal kick. Potentially one last substitution coming up for Clemson. And it is Conti coming on from Manusis. And A. Lyles. Wide open for Bruff. Beautifully done. And not enough to get past Skinner. That was a great possession again, and it looked similar to the goal for Clemson as well, where it was a interchange, got back to the center midfielder, bursting into the box, and Borncamp just didn't hit it as well as she would have wanted to. Oh, could this be another close matchup that ends the way of the Tigers? No foul, Pelkowski chipping it forward. Oh, the backs for Clemson, it has just been Masterclass so far for the Tigers here. Could it be their ninth shutout? And another clean sheet for Makowitz. Throw in Tigers. Four of the last eight meetings decided by one goal or less. Will it be five of nine today? And will it be three games in a row decided by one goal? And that's the type of game it's felt like today. I mean, a one goal type of affair. Clemson has created a lot of good opportunities, created corner kicks, but every time they've come in, this Virginia Tech defense has done a good job dealing with it. 
and then the Clemson back line, and, and their possession has just been dominating. And they're already trying to work some clock out, and well, it, it certainly is coming to fruition now. The Tigers have had the ball in this corner for the last minute. It's up to Eden Skyers to try to win it back for Tech. And now Hokies ball, they have to hurry. Remember, as of last year, no overtime. So Virginia Tech scores. Another team would have to find a winner. Would end in a draw. But as it stands, two minutes away from Clemson's 10th victory of the 2023 season. Almost won it back. A wasting precious time now for Virginia Tech. If you're Virginia Tech, you've just got to get the ball up now. As so often they played the long ball, but man, they can just not get it out of their own half. Clemson pressuring extremely well. Free kick, Hokies. Yeah, it's a hard collision and and it will be a yellow card. So Hirschfeld going into the books. Yeah, that's one Pelkowski got to the header first, wins it. And a hard shoulder into the back and late to it. And Pelkowski had already was a bit slow to get up earlier on in the second half. It has right. been... Such a physical matchup. Junior from Westchester, Pennsylvania, a player that Chugger Adair groups with Lauren Gogol a lot when he talks about players that don't necessarily always get on the stat sheet but make a big difference for his program. And asked her if she's okay, and she's going to go back out for this final minute and 12 seconds. Pelkowski and Gogol are both so tough in there in midfield and both the type of players that you'd expect hey you know I'm, I'm gonna get knocked down let me get back up there and see if I can get on to something here at the end of the game interestingly enough how physical this matchup has been and how many fouls there have been that is the first yellow card And in the air, Skyers hitting the grass now for Gogol. Eden Skyers. One minute remaining. And a weir. Well, that felt like that likely could have been the last chance for Virginia Tech. I think Mitchell was open on that one, too. She had kind of pulled out to outside of the box. I don't mind the shot from Weir, but you see Mitchell there trying to make that run past the back line. And that was a, a good little spell from the free kick for the Hokies for that maybe one last shot. Maybe one more. Less than 30 seconds to go. And it will be a throw in, not a corner. Skyers now. Down for Mitchell. Nothing there. 10 seconds. Mitchell has to try a prayer here. At least someone does. It'll be Gogol. And Makowitz falls on the ball for her ninth shutout of the season. What a win for Clemson. And the Tigers maintain their streak against Virginia Tech. What a professional game. They are after the one goal. Clemson possessing the ball. And a wall of white there at the end in the last two minutes just to make sure Virginia Tech could generate anything for themselves to get that potential draw. 
Uh, this Clemson team is extremely good. Great effort by the Hokies, 